Every source has a source. The Athletic. Real Madrid are one of the wealthiest sports clubs on the planet. With revenues in excess of 700 million euros in 2019-20, despite the pandemic. And wealthy clubs have wealthy owners. Roman Abramovich, Sheikh Mansour, John Henry. But while Real's flamboyant president Florentino Perez is the club's figurehead and public face, he's not the owner. So who actually does own Real Madrid? The short answer is the socios. These are club members, and there are around 90,000 of them, each holding voting rights in return for paying an annual subscription of 123 euros. To become a socio, you have to be vouched for by two existing ones, and if you have been one for 50 years, you no longer have to pay dues. As well as voting in presidential and board elections, socios get benefits around ticketing and the sense of being part of the fabric of the club. And there are only four socio-owned clubs in Spain, Real Madrid, Barcelona, CA Osasuna and Athletic Club. Every other club in Spain is an SAD, a Sociedad Anonimo Deportiva, effectively a limited company with specific governing rules because of their involvement in sport. This stems back to 1990, when Spain passed a law that would have wide-reaching implications for club ownership. This law forced Spanish sports clubs, not just football ones, to go public by June 1992. The intention was to protect these clubs as institutions, and prior to that, pretty much every club in Spain had been run by socios. Going public was a measure to force clubs to be more accountable and ensure better governance. But there was an exemption clause that Real Madrid and the other three clubs took advantage of. The seventh additional provision of the law states that any club who could show that they had operated in profit in each of the five previous seasons, going back to 1985-86, could remain as a socio-run club. Only Real Madrid, Barcelona, Osasuna and Athletic could prove this and so they exercised their right to remain exempt from Law 10, 1990. But back to the socios, what do they actually do? Well, every four years, the socios elect a president who then runs the club for their tenure. But beyond that, the socios have limited influence. In fact, they have none. And this is where things become a little bit more complicated. Being a socio-run club entails certain rules and responsibilities for the president and the board of directors. Real Madrid cannot raise funds the normal way that a publicly owned company can. They cannot float or raise money by selling off shares and must instead rely on their revenue. As the Athletics' Matt Slater explains, they could put money in via increased subs or some kind of fundraising effort, but it would raise issues for FFP regulators. Instead, the club must rely on television rights, match day and merchandising revenue, and other commercial deals. Now, this isn't normally a huge issue for Real Madrid or Barcelona. Both clubs dwarf the rest of La Liga with their revenue streams. In fact, the combined revenues of Real and Barca are almost as much as the rest of La Liga make together, around 1.5 billion. Real made 757 million euros in 2018-19, and that fell to 715 million in 1920. The biggest decrease was in stadium revenue, obviously, while football wages increased to 378 million euros. Television revenue fell to 149 million, but marketing and commercial revenue actually increased to 312 million. And they also increased revenue from player sales. This is how Real were able to post a slight post-tax profit of just over 300,000 euros, while most of Europe's big clubs were hemorrhaging money. The club can take on debt to finance wages or longer-term projects like the stadium renovation, and this is generally done at favourable rates with local banks. The club also took out a government loan due to the pandemic. But, as the Athletics' Dermot Corrigan puts it, Madrid have to live off what they can make. And this is why, with revenues down and no fresh injections of capital, the club are falling behind the other behemoths of European football, like Manchester City or PSG. The president and the board of directors also have a serious financial obligation. According to the seventh additional provision, directors must be able to provide 15% of annual turnover in the form of a bank guarantee every season. This guarantee can be exercised as a liability should the club find itself in an insurmountable financial crisis. Either the directors themselves, 5% of socios by vote, or the league itself can force this to be paid out by the directors to save the club, should it ever come to that. This means that in order to run as president or to be appointed to the board, you have to be very rich. 
Perez, Real Madrid's current president, is the head of engineers and construction company Grupo ACS and has a reported net worth of 2.3 billion euros in 2018, according to Forbes magazine. And that's one of the issues with socio-ownership. Although technically these socios can determine the club's direction with their vote in presidential elections, after that power is concentrated in the president's hands and his or her board of directors for four years. It creates a situation where only a certain wealthy elite can hold these positions because of the 15% rule. And Perez or other presidential hopefuls can make all kinds of promises around player signings and coaching appointments to win over voters. Fulfilling these promises, like building the Galactico eras at Real, costs lots of money, and that's money that must come from revenue. So it's a tricky balancing act that demands a lot of political and financial nous to get right, and one that clubs haven't always navigated successfully. And there can also be a lack of the kind of financial oversight that comes from shareholder participation, and elections are often full of accusations of financial mismanagement. Socios get no say beyond the presidency either. Decisions on signings, other investments and commercial deals sit solely with the board. But there are benefits to being a socio-owned club. Not being a publicly traded company means that the clubs can benefit from not-for-profit status with banks, meaning that loan arrangements are cheaper. Members feel that the club is closer to them and that they have a stake and a voice in its running, however limited that might be. And the club is preserved as an entity, assuming it's run well and cannot be dismantled or moved used to run up significant debts or taken over by anyone with enough money to do so. But we don't need another striker. Listen, he's going to sign. My nephew's girlfriend's brother's barber, his best friend to the Kidman assistant. Every source has a source. The Athletic. If you liked today's video, please subscribe to the channel to help us reach 1 million subscribers. And we're also pleased to be able to offer you access to The Athletic for just £1 per week. Follow the stories that you care about with closer access and intelligent takes. See the link in the description now to sign up. Thank you.